Hello everybody, and welcome back to another quiz tutorial. So in this tutorial, we're going to be covering quiz number 19, which focuses on the true stress and strain of metals. And as you guys will see, I always kind of tack on the for metals, because this is a very special case, because we assume something very particular, but for metals, it's usually a very safe assumption. Now this quiz will probably be the shortest quiz you guys have ever seen. I don't even need to go to the iPad, we're just going to use Excel. So if you guys see one of these on your next midterm or final, you guys are thinking, yes, this is great. True stress and strain, easy peasy. I got this. So with that being said, let's kind of jump into the theory and then into the example. All right, so if you guys may remember, we've already kind of talked about the true stress and strain in terms of the stretch ratio, that lambda, because what we assumed before is that if we take an object and we stretch it, we compared the original length to the deformed length. However, in many engineering applications, you guys will see that that's not exactly what we do. For instance, if we're looking at a steel tensile test, what we do is we take that piece of steel, put it in the machine, but then rather than measuring its complete length, what we do is we actually measure the engineering strain in the steel. Well, that's great. That's fine. We have the engineering strain, but we have to remember that we need to convert that to the true strain. So in an actual engineering application, we're actually typically given the engineering stress and the engineering strain. But for our models and stuff like that, we're interested in the true strain and the true stress. So we need to figure out a way to convert from engineering stress to true stress. Now, it's actually very simple because if we know the engineering stress and strain, we can use two formulas to find the true stress and strain for metals. Remember, I tack on that for metals because the key assumption that we have is volume preservation, that the volume after deformation is actually the same as the volume before deformation, stuff like that. And again, for metals, it's pretty safe assumption, no problem at all. So again, if we know the engineering stress and strain, we can use that to find the true stress and strain using the following formulas. So the true strain is actually equal to the natural logarithm of one plus the engineering strain. You guys are looking at that saying, ah, piece of cake. I can throw that in my calculator in three seconds. Great. I want this to be nice and easy for you guys. I hope you guys find this easy. Engineer, uh, sorry, the true stress, a little bit more complicated, but in the end, it's a simple formula where the true stress is equal to the engineering stress uh, multiplied by one plus the engineering strain. So again, not too bad, nice, too easy formulas. And if you guys know these, any midterm or final question will be nice and easy for you guys, which is exactly what I want. All right, so let's jump into the example. Since we're given a bunch of points, I'm actually gonna do this in Excel rather than on the iPad, which is nice because we can actually graph them and see what they look like. So with that being said, let's jump into the example. Alrighty guys, welcome to my beautiful Excel table. As you guys can see on the left hand side, I listed both the engineering strain and the engineering stress. These were given right from the question and what it wants us to do is find the true strain and the true stress. Now, the only thing that we're gonna have to keep in mind or the only real trick to this question is when we're given engineering strain right from the lab, it's typically in a value of percent. However, that's not exactly what we want. We want it in a unitless value, millimeters per millimeter is usually what uh, people say in their publications, stuff like that. So in order to do that, all I have to do is take that percentage and divide it by 100. As you guys see, that'll be nice and easy. So in Excel, if I want to find the engineering strain in millimeter per millimeter, and I'm given the strain in percent, all I have to do is take that value of strain, as I can see here, as I highlight it, and I simply just divide it by 100. So I go divide it by 100, nice and easy. And then what I can do in Excel, as you guys know, nice and easy, is I can drop down the values to get all my nice strains. And in the bottom here, I actually have the graph nice and ready. So when I have the engineering strain in millimeters per millimeter, I graph it against the engineering stress. As we can see, we're given a nice curve like this. And if you guys may remember from 270, this is actually most probably, I'm going to say most probably because I'm not 100% sure, but... This is uh, typical steel behavior. Uh, as you guys may remember from the theory, steel usually goes up nice and elastic, which is what we see, and then it flattens out. So the flattened out part, it actually is a very small region. We're dealing with a lot of strain here. That strain of 0.25, that's a ton of strain. That's why we don't really see that nice flat yielding point. But as you guys remember, shortly after the yielding, we have something called strain hardening, where the steel kind of gains a little bit of strength, not a lot but uh, this strain hardening occurs over a very large period of strain, which is what we're seeing exactly here. So at this point, all we have right now is the engineering stress and strain. We have no true strain, anything like that. So we can use these two formulas, which I brought in to the Excel file here, to very quickly find out the engineering, uh, sorry, the true strain and the true stress. So let's start off with the true strain. So if I come over here to my true strain column, I can go equal to, and I can type in the formula. 
So the formula is the natural logarithm of 1 plus the engineering strain. So the only real question that we may have is how do I type in the natural logarithm in Excel? Well, it's very simple. I go capital L, capital N, and I put two brackets. And inside the brackets is what I want to take the natural logarithm of. And in this case, it's 1 plus the engineering strain. So I come over here and I click my engineering strain in values of millimeter per millimeter. If you guys use the engineering strain in percent, you guys will get a wrong value. So it's better to go the millimeter per millimeter version. And I click enter and I have my value at 000. And then what I can do is I can simply drop this down to get all my data points as so. As we can see, looking pretty good. I can move on to the true stress now that I have the true strain, even though I don't need the true strain to calculate the true stress. So just like before, I'm going to use the nice formula shown below. And I can say, OK, well, my true stress is going to be equal to my engineering stress, which is all the way over here. So I'm going to click that. And then it's multiplied by 1 plus the engineering strain. So I'm just going to go 1 plus and then my engineering strain again over here. And again, I'm picking the millimeter per millimeter. I'm not picking the percentage. I click enter. I get that my true stress is equal to zero when my engineering stress is equal to zero. Uh, I guess that makes sense. No problem at all. So what I can do is I can drop it down and then I'm having all my values right here, which is what the question wanted, the true stress and the true strain. Now, looking at the curve, as you guys can see, for very low strains, uh, they're about identical. But as we get into higher levels of strains, that's when we see the kind of the divergence where the true stress kind of increases at a larger rate than the engineering stress. So kind of a little fun fact to see. It's always nice looking at and see, OK, this is exactly what we're what we're looking at. So that concludes this uh, quiz tutorial. Again, should have been nice and short, nice and sweet. I hope you guys learned something, even though this is probably pretty trivial for you guys. You guys are way smarter than me. So I hope it helped <laughs> at least a little bit. And yeah, that's it. Thank you guys all so much for listening. I will see you guys in quiz number 20.